We know that nitroglycerin is often contraindicated in fear and in inferior MIs. At least the spray form is. So what I want to do is kind of talk to you about the why that is. Okay, so let's talk about this inferior MI first. So this inferior MI is essentially affecting two of vessels or two particular vessels. One, it could be the RCA that runs like so, okay, RCA, and the right coronary artery makes up for about 80% of your uh, inferior MIs, okay, of blockage in that particular vessel. Then we have another one which is the left circumflex, and the left circumflex kind of runs out like this and kind of in the back, and so that guy, circumflex, Okay, that guy makes up for about 18% um, of your uh, inferior MIs. And then the other 2% are more anomalies and different weird stuff going on within the vasculature itself. We're not going to cover those because they're not really important to really cover in this particular video. We'll cover that in another video. But that is kind of the basis point is that 80% of them are happening from the RCA itself. And the RCA is going to cover or it's going to feed blood to a lot of the septal portion, okay, the right septal portion and a lot of this right ventricle. And so that is important to understand. This left circumflex a little bit different and we're going to focus mostly on this RCA which is why nitroglycerin ends up being dangerous in an inferior MI is because of this common RCA uh, blockage, okay? So let's go into this. Well, what are we looking for as far as a 12 lead ECG? Really simple, we're looking at three separate leads. We're looking at lead two, okay? Okay, lead two, we're looking at lead three, and we're looking at lead AVF. Okay, so looking at these three, these inferior leads, we have ST elevation here in lead two. Okay, so that's a positive sign of, a, of an MI. We have a little bit of ST elevation in lead three. You could probably call that two, like one mil, so not really enough to say this is confirmed, but AVF definitely has confirmed elevation. So in this particular case, an inferior MI, you're looking at two, three in AVF for ST elevation. If you see that, then you probably have a positive confirmation of an inferior MI. Okay, now we do know, like I said, that we have two separate vessels that are, could be the culprit here. Now, how do we really find out which one is actually the culprit? Well, the best way to do that, it's not a perfect science, but the best way to do that is to look at lead one. Now, lead one is a high lateral lead looking directly opposite of what basically these leads are looking at. Okay, so what we would be looking for is what we call reciprocal changes or opposite changes. And so this guy here has ST depression. Okay, which is basically the opposite of what we'd be looking for here in the inferior leads, which is ST elevation. Now what that basically is telling us is that we have reciprocal changes in lead one. Now if you see ST elevation or ST depression or reciprocal changes in lead one, that is indicative of a RCA blockage. If you have no ST depression or reciprocal changes in lead one, you're probably looking at left circumflex. Now that's not again not a perfect science. But if you're looking at that, this is a good way to kind of figure out which one is actually the culprit here. And that is looking at lead one and seeing if there's any reciprocal changes, which gives you a better idea that we have an RCA blockage over a left circumflex. Now, the thing you want to do in an inferior MI is you want to be checking on the right ventricle. Best way to do that is take the V4R sticker, flip it over to the right side of the chest and do a V4R and see if you have ST elevation there. That will tell you how damaged or how affected that right ventricle is. Important to know, especially when we start going for a treatment down the road. Okay, so that is using our 12 lead to really figure out kind of little pieces of what we need to know as far as this inferior MI goes. Now, why is that all important? Well, when it happens, when we have an inferior MI, we have a decrease, okay, in contractility. Okay. Okay, we have a decrease in tractility. Now, when we have a decrease in contractility, we're gonna have, that's gonna be particularly affecting this right ventricle itself. Remember the septum and portions of the right ventricle are gonna have the decrease in contractility. Now, if we have a decrease in contractility, that means we're moving less blood towards the, the lungs in order to be oxygenated. So what our body tries to do is try, so it tries to compensate. And by compensating, it's gonna try and increase preload. 
okay? And what preload is, is the amount of fluid in this ventricle prior to contraction. So if we have decreased contractility, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase that preload so when we do get good, some contractility, we're at least pushing some fluid. It's essentially the idea behind this. So that's why we're compensating by increasing the preload in an inferior MI. And that's why we say that inferior MIs are often preload dependent, meaning they really need this preload and if they don't have it, it becomes very dangerous for that particular patient. Okay, now going into the nitro question, why is it a problem? Well, nitro or nitroglycerin, when you introduce it, particularly in spray form, which has a lot of micrograms and, and milligrams in that particular spray, what we're going to do is we're going to convert that into nitric oxide. Okay, and nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see vasodilation from that nitroglycerin, okay, because of the conversion into the nitric oxide. And when we do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be particularly vasodilating the veins and the venules. And so what that's going to do is mean we're going to have less blood return back to that right ventricle. And if we have less blood return back to that right ventricle, we're going to have a pretty profound decrease in preload. And remember, these inferior MIs are very preload dependent. So if we decrease the preload by introducing too much nitroglycerin, then we're going to cause a pretty substantial drop in the ability to contract any blood through the heart and through the lungs, which means that we're going to have a serious decrease in blood pressure due to the fact that we're decreasing all that preload that that heart needs at that moment by giving nitroglycerin. That's why it's dangerous. Now, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be giving nitroglycerin in these situations. Not particularly. We can still look at giving infusions, which is a much lower dose, and creeping up to kind of titrate it. What I'm saying right now is that a spray in the inferior MI can be detrimental to this patient because we're trying so desperately to hold on to that preload, and nitroglycerin is going to knock that preload out. That is why it's dangerous. Thank you so much for checking out this quick little video on nitroglycerin and why it's dangerous in an inferior MI. If you are in EMT or paramedic school and you're struggling, or maybe you're just starting and you're not sure where to start with your studying and how to study, maybe I would suggest becoming a Master of Medics member. You can start a three-day free trial right now and check out all the videos that we have. We have thousands of these videos that teach you a little bit about medicine piece by piece, so that way you can be a better, stronger EMT and paramedic student coming out the gate and being ready for your exams. We'll see you on the inside.